So, Dave, uh, Monster Magnet lead guy, are you there, brother? Reverend Derek, what's happening? I am just waiting to hear from you with bated breath. Yeah, huh? You know, the first thing I want to ask you, and I hope it's not too cheesy, <laughs> where did the name Monster Magnet come from? Oh, it came from a toy I had when I was a kid. Really? Yeah, it was this red magnet in the shape of a horseshoe, except bigger than a horseshoe. And um, the horseshoe was this monster guy. Like, it looked like a genie, like a, uh, like a devil-looking guy, devil ears. Okay. And um, the, the center of, you know, the top of the horseshoe was his head and a big wide-open mouth and his shoulders. And as the shoulders rounded over, it was just arms. And at the end of the arms were his fists. And um, there were magnets on the end of his fist. So you put your hand through the month, through the devil guy's mouth and just picked up, I don't know, picked up Tonka trucks or whatever. Well, that's kind of cool. Now, was that actually called a monster magnet? It was called a monster magnet, right. That's pretty cool, man. What year did you guys start the band, or what year did you form Monster Magnet? Um, monster officially was formed in 91. Really? Yeah. So, and you're also the guy that writes and produces all this, all the music, right? That's right. Okay, except for the last CD, you, your, your CD you put out last year, I believe, uh, Bob Ezrin produced the uh, Silver Future tune. Well, yeah, he produced the Silver Future, Future tune, which was done for actually a, a soundtrack. Um, for heavy metal? Yeah, for heavy metal. That's right. Now, what was it like to work with Ezrin, and did you get a chance to work with him? Uh, it was great, yeah. We worked with Ezrin. Ezrin was really cool. I bet, yeah. He's he's done a lot of legendary stuff, like Alice Cooper stuff that I really like. Unbelievably, he did. Like, he did The Wall by Pink Floyd. He did all the early Alice Cooper stuff that was great. He did, oh, yeah. Uh, Kiss Destroyer. That's so right. The only problem working with Ezrin was actually working, because I just talked his ear off the whole time. <laughs> he's like a wealth of information, you man. Know, it was asking questions about, you know... What, what did Alice Cooper do on I'm 18? What happened with the wall? And blah, 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 blah. Well, you know, uh, Cooper's original uh, guitar player, Michael Bruce, stayed at my house uh, not too long ago. Really? Yeah, I'm a huge Alice Cooper freak, man. Hey, man, that, that original Alice Cooper band is absolutely awesome. Uh, I tell you what, Michael Bruce told me some stories that I've never read in no books, man. <laughs> hey, I was reading an interview with you, speaking of uh, rock stars, and you were talking about today's music scene. And basically what you were kind of saying was that today's popular music is kind of like angry bubblegum. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I mean, the stuff that, that passes for rock, or the stuff that they call rock, which was, I guess when, if, if you had to uh, call it anything, you'd call it like new metal. Okay, like Slipknot and bands like that? Yeah. <clears throat> it's, it blows. Yeah. yeah. It just blows. It's like not even... Most of it, I can't even remember it after I hear it, you know? Just because yeah. of the lack of, like, m uh, melody? Well, yeah. It's like no songs. And, um... Now, I could dig it, you know, on its vibe, and I could dig it live, I guess, for a couple minutes, but when it comes down to it, there's not much difference between this stuff and the boy bands. Yeah. You know, because it's a gimmick. They got their gimmick, like Slipknot's got the mass and stuff like that, and they, they, but they suck. Yeah, bands like uh, Mudvayne, Mushroomhead, Slipknot. Yeah, you know, it's like, it's like, wow, you guys sound horrible. Okay, how know? about this, Dave? Are there any new bands that you do like? Yeah, there's... um. There's stuff, I mean, I like that, I know, like the new Down record. It's yeah. really cool. Good band. I like um, some uh, stuff from Seattle, like Zen Gorilla. I think it's really cool. Really okay. cool rock and roll band. The guy's got a real voice. Have you heard The Strokes? Um, I like that. I like the one song about The Strokes. The rest of the record, I was not happy, but I like, I like the, the tune. Here's the deal. Here's something I really wanted to ask you, just from uh, having your both of your CDs. Are you a fan of any old, like, punk rock stuff? Oh, yeah. Like, you like, like, Iggy Pop? Oh, are you kidding? Like, The Stooges was like a... Yeah. <laughs> Huge influence on that, me as that's a kid. My favorite band too, brother. What about Wendy O. Williams and the Plasmatics? Yep, I saw them a bunch of times when I was little. When I was about like, uh, no, I guess like fifteen or sixteen. They used to come through New Jersey all the time. We used to always sneak in, get fake IDs, and go see them. Yeah, Wendy was a good friend of mine. As a matter of fact, uh, my band is working with West Beach now. We're going to be on the new Plasmatics tribute CD that's coming. Really out. awesome. Yeah. Um, another thing, man. This is this is going to blow you away, maybe. But you guys played in Peoria, which is where I'm from. Uh, the last show you played there was at the Madison Theater, I believe, with Buck Cherry. Right, okay, I remember that. And I hear that that show got pretty erotic on stage. It did. Lots of strippers from Big Al's came on stage, and I heard it was like a sex show. Yeah, it was, uh, <clears throat> you know, sometimes when you open up the doors, Rev, you know, <laughs> <laughs> when you open up the doors to give people the freedom to do what they want to do, what they do can surprise you. So you know what, I, I mean, that show is like legendary. People talk about that like all the time. Remember Monster Magnet, those chicks on stage? And then every time I hear about it, I'm it, there's another thing, element like added to it. It's like, okay, then that really happened? Uh-huh. Yeah. You know, but well, you should have seen the you should have seen the backstage. That was insane. Oh my to god! Are you married? Uh, no, I'm divorced. As a matter of fact. So, so you're a single guy? Yes. Oh my god! You're, you're, you've got to be dangerous. <laughs> well, you know, 
rock and roll may not always pay off in money, <laughs> but uh, and, and when you're in a state of suspended adolescence such as myself, <laughs> uh, little things mean a lot. Okay, is there any chance of that kind of gig happening this Sunday in Champaign-Urbana? You know, it could be. Um, what happened, I think, the last time is like we always take volunteers. We don't we don't pay, you know. So it's really up to the people that are around if they want to do it or not. I got gotcha. you. Love it, love it to happen. So, um, you know, if there's any if there's any ladies listening that want like you know a free plug for their strip bar, like bring it on. There you go. I heard I heard a rumor. I don't know. I may be sounding naive here, but I heard you're into the whole uh, like S and M leather bondage scene. Is that true at all? I mean, well. You know, it's a, it's a wide world out there, and it'd be a shame not to taste all the food that's on the plate. Yeah, I hear that. Amen, brother. Mm-hmm. Yes, indeed. Are you a big comic book fan? I love comic books. Sp- I loved them since I was, you know, eight years old. Did you so see on. Spider-Man? I did. What'd you think? I thought they did a great job. Me too. I thought they, you know, they finally nailed it. Um, the real essence of, especially in early 60s, and although it wasn't placed in the 60s, but they kind of nailed that essence of the 60s Marvel comic book. A lot of guilt. Right. You know, um, a likable a likable nerd and a, and a wish fulfillment that every kid, you know. There you go. I mean, it's completely killer. Who wouldn't want to be Spider-Man? They're it's, awesome. I love they Spidey. Did a great job. Spidey rocks. Hey, yeah. man, uh, do you watch the Osbournes TV show? Yeah, I've seen it. What do you think about it? <laughs> yeah, I don't know whether to laugh or cry. I know. That's kind of what you, you heard about Ted Nugent's comments. No, what did Ted say? Ted was basically saying that he, he idolized Ozzy for, for being the legend that he is, but it was just pathetic. And how the words he used, you know how Ted is, the words he used were like really ripping on Ozzy to where Ozzy's family is like really pissed at Ted Nugent right now. <laughs> Ozzy said, Ozzy's like, I don't know why he goes out and kills animals when you can just go to the store and that kind of thing. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I, I can't blame those guys. You know, if you're, you're going to be a TV sensation, you know, you just lay back and enjoy it. Um, exactly. My, my theory is that, you know, Ozzy has been, uh, you know, kind of like a puppet on a string for a while because he's just, you know, he's kind of pooped out. Yeah, his wife... Wa- w- I'd, I'd, I'd feel sorry for Ozzy without Sharon, man. Yeah, I know what you mean. You know? But, the, you know, the thing about Oz that gets me the most, and, uh, you know, TV show aside, whatever, because this TV show is funny. I mean, it's really funny. Oh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> it's just at whose expense is it funny? It kind of reminds me of the Beverly Hillbillies. <laughs> Except, you know, it's like you take a bunch of uh, white trash Britishers out of... Uh, <laughs> Out of England, stick him in Hollywood, and that's what you get, you know? What a parallel. Ozzy Osbourne, Jed Clampett. It, it's true. That's funny, man. I mean, it's the same thing. It's like, look what they do. And they have this big, giant house. What do they do? They all hang around the kitchen. Yeah, they do. They curse at each other, that kind of thing. But the, um, the thing about Ozzy that gets me the most, and this is what gets some people pissed off at me, is that he, um, I don't think he knows what's going on with Ozfest. I don't think he really understands. I don't think Ozzy has anything to do with any of the bands today at all. I think Sharon and, and, and Jack do it all. Yeah, and, and it's done for money, and it's not done for, you know, it's not done for, like, any kind of musical movement. It's just done for dough. It is kind of funny, man. So here's this guy, the great Oz, the Blizzard of Oz, who, you know, was a founding member of Black Sabbath, who started a genre of music that was, like, that's unkillable. And what do they sell beneath it? Just the worst crap in the world. It's just it's it's weird. It's it's weird. Um, it's surreal, man. Yeah, it's, it's surreal, and it, you know that he could do it better. You know, you know that it could be done better. But it, the Ozfest turned into such a money machine. I mean, you know about the seventy-five grand, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, everybody out there should realize that the Ozfest is a paid gig. You want to play on that thing? You got to pay him. Wait a minute. Back up. You've got to pay to be on Ozfest. It's paid to be on Ozfest. So all the bands that play Ozfest have to play. To get there, have to pay to get there. Wow, I did not know that. I took huge amounts of money. That's freaky. I did not know that. Sorry, man. Up to seventy grand, up to seventy-five grand for the, for the, and uh, which is why Monster Man has never done Ozfest. That's a lot of dough, man. I can't, you know. It's like number one, I can't really afford it. Number two, it would really, really stick in my throat. Oh yeah, it's just almost like pay to play. What the hell? Yeah, you know. I mean, I guess you could, you know, it would be cool if you paid to be like number two or number three, but. uh, you know, you, you rarely get that spot. So, I don't know. In my in my mind, there should be. I wish they could have chopped that thing up into a bunch of little tiny Ozfests that ran all summer. There you go. And give a bunch of newer bands a shot at it. You know, that that didn't feel like paying. To Here, get here's a uh, monster magnet question. What exactly is a space lord? Space lord is a name that was given to me by the uh, European press because I, I used to. We were famous in Europe for doing <clears throat> these really long, like five-hour psychedelic sets. Wow. 
with light shows and just like completely because of people that are so like stoned out of their mind that we would just like get them and uh, light shows and fire and naked people and stuff and I was kind of like the ringleader of all this stuff. So the press started going, like, Space Lord Dave Windorf, Space Lord this, Space Lord that. A uh, quick cut to New Orleans, I had, a, like, a, a busted uh, uh, rotator cuff thing, messed up rotator cuff, and I hooked up with this woman who made fun of me because she didn't know, you know, about the Space Lord stuff. She started reading it in this press that I got. She's like, oh, what's the matter with you, Mr. Space Lord? Oh, you got a hurt wing, huh? You got a broken wing, huh? And I'm like, look, you know, like, give me a break, Okay. And she's like, oh, Mr. Space Lord, Mr. Space Lord. Anyway. Um, that's wild, dude. It was wild. So so that song is basically about you. It's, a, it's about me um, pretty much sticking my tongue out at, at, at uh, this, this woman that I was living with. She was completely hot, but we just, just we didn't get along. She, she knew exactly how to, get, how to get me going. I got you. And they always do, Dave. Oh, yeah. Hey, man, I got a couple more, and I'll let you go, bro. Sure. Uh, the first one is, when can we expect a new release from Monster Magnet? Um, 2003. Okay. Yeah, I'm just waiting a little, a little while because at, um, at the top of, well, at the top of last year, about midsummer last year, when um, our record company, uh, Interscope, which was actually was A and M, but they were bought by Interscope. Right. Uh, when they started making noise to me about not releasing a second single and just going in and doing another record, I was like, I gotta go. Um, it, it's a really I, weird imagine time. that problems with the record company. Yeah, I mean it's a really weird time for music right now for for the industry. Everything is about big money. That's true, man. And for a band like Monster Magnet, you know, who's pretty much founded in like you know. Drug lore, you know, yeah. drug lore and like and like you know, kind of strange mysticism, psychedelic rock, um, um, stoogy rock, that kind of thing. It, there's not much faith. Com- there wasn't much faith coming off the record company for that kind of music. Gotcha. They just wanted to sell rap rock and new metal. It's soulless crap, dude. Yeah, and I said, you know, I, I gotta go. So what we did was we split from them, and then uh, I just I took some time off. I went to Europe, where the where the the living is good, you know. You can travel around there and do psych rock and freak out and stuff. And there's no, there's no drinking laws there. You can play to like all ages and all the kids have fun and go crazy. You know? Raw power. Yeah, and um, they came back and said, "All right, I'm going to look for a new label now." So that's what I'm doing right now. And part of doing that is actually being out there and touring. Gotcha, brother. Uh, I'm going to ask one more question for you, and then I'll ask you to do some station IDs for me. Right on. And the last question, Dave, is this: Would you rather serve in heaven? Or rain in hell. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes I think um, if a person is destined to rain in hell, I think that like kind of counterbalances everything as part of the yin and the yang. Yeah. So um, I don't think I have any choice in the matter, but right now I'm raining in hell. Amen, brother. Right. Hey, we'll see you Sunday at the Canopy Club in Ur- uh, Champaign-Urbana. That's right. Looking forward to it, bro. Uh-huh. Dave, thanks a million. Thanks.